Tending the forests is much like tending many crops. Plant the seed, grow the bedding plants, prepare the soil, plant the seedlings, fertilize them, do your weeding and tending. The silviculture branch of the BC Ministry of Forests and Lands is doing all these things to meet its goals. To replant all the BC forest land that is now being logged or that is being burned off by wildfire. To catch up with the help of the Federal Provincial Forest Resource Development Agreement by planting all the land previously logged or burned off. To help the forest grow faster. To produce a better product for the mills. This is an enormous task, but the branch is gearing up for it. And here's what it takes. British Columbia needs more trees. Trees to replace the ones we harvest. Trees to replace the ones that burn. Straight trees, fast growing trees. Trees that are easy to harvest and mill. Where can we get them? We start with good looking wild trees like these. We take seed or cuttings from them and raise young trees. The best of these young trees become part of a provincial seed orchard, like this one at Duncan, or from a commercial seed orchard. We don't get all the seed we need from seed orchards, so we gather more from the best wild trees we can find. The cones come here, to the provincial nursery in Surrey. Those cones are then taken and put on trays and into a kiln, where they're heated overnight and the cones are allowed to expand so that the seeds can be tumbled out of them. The seeds are then taken and processed through various machines which screen them or take out debris in a liquid bath. They are dried down and then a final separation and cleaning takes place to a clean seed product. That seed is stored in freezers for up to 30 years or more. The seed is withdrawn from the freezers whenever there is a request from the nurseries. Now if the seedlings we ship are going to do well, they have to be planted in specific areas, so we choose the seed carefully when we fill the order. Without winter to prepare them, the seeds cannot come to life and germinate in the spring. At Surrey, we create winter. We soak the seeds to create the fall rains. We cool them to near freezing to create a forest winter. Then we plant. At nurseries like this one at Duncan, machines sow the seed with precision. The alternative before the precision seeder was uh, doing everything by hand. And this machine does the equivalent work of about 50 people working by hand. We start the process by mixing soil at the far end of the line. A person standing at the end of the soil loader feeds in the empty sterile blocks, which are loaded with soil mix at a controlled density. At the seeding machine, a measured amount of seed is put into each cavity, whether it's single, double, or triple sowing, and we top off the cavities with a measured amount of grit, and this protects the seeds as they're growing in the field. At the end of the line, we have our, our pickup system, and the blocks are transported by, onto a pallet and then taken out onto a greenhouse or an open compound for further growing. These seedlings represent the future BC forest. They will stay in this nursery for a one-year or two-year term before they leave to be planted. During this critical time, we have to help them grow and prepare them for survival in the forest. At the Ministry's Saanich Research Station, we experiment with peat moss and fertilizers to find the best possible treatment for the seedlings. During their stay at the nursery, we treat the seedlings to help them grow and become strong. Then we ship them out to be planted. The old forest was planted by nature. The new forest is a mix of these natural trees and trees that were planted by man. Our goal for the 1987-1988 year is to plant more than 60% of the land that is currently logged or burned with high quality seedlings from government and commercial nurseries. Our long-term goal is 75%. Uh, in this uh, present year, uh, they're slated to plant 200 million trees in the province. And for me, who at one time grew four million trees and thought I was really doing things, uh, 200 million seems an awful lot of trees. The big worry that uh, we perhaps have is the backlog of areas that were not planted when they should have been in, in past years, many of them going back for many, many years that have grown up to brush. And it's a very costly procedure to 
prepare those sites so they can uh, plant trees and hope to get them established in those areas. Before the seedlings can be planted, the site has to be ready. Prescribed broadcast burns are the best and least costly method. We watch the weather carefully. The burn only takes place when smoke and fire will be the least hazard to nearby trees and communities. In some cases, instead of burning, we use mechanical methods to prepare the site for planting. This machine, designed by the silviculture branch, turns the rich topsoil under, making small mounds that are ideal for seedlings. Contractors bring in crews to do the planting. The techniques of planting vary quite strongly. And the survival of the tree mainly depends on the seed stock of what we're planting. If it's a good stock for the area, then the tree has a good chance of survival. And the last chance that it gets for survival is us putting the tree in the ground. You know, you know when you planted not. a bad tree and when you planted a good yeah. tree. And uh, I, I feel good planting in the sense that we're regenerating the, the forests again. And, and it's uh, also something that you can bring, in 20 years, you can bring your kids back to, or it'll probably move, be my great-great-grandson that cuts down the trees that I'm planting today. When planting is finished, crop tending begins. We inspect the young trees several times. The Forest Resource Development Agreement helps with the cost. First, a check on the seedlings. Are they surviving? Are they competing successfully with other plants? Or is weeding necessary? It may be necessary to remove brush or young alders to keep the seedlings growing. The next check is on juvenile trees between 10 and 20 years of age. If there are too many, they compete with each other. We give them room to breathe and grow. We cut down some of the trees so that the remaining ones can grow well. As the trees begin to reach commercial size, the ministry or the forest company surveys them again. They may need to be thinned out one last time to yield the best possible final harvest. It, it pays for itself essentially. We're, the Forest Service certainly isn't making a lot of money out of this, this project. It's, uh, it's covering the cost of marking it and the layout, the engineering of it. Uh, uh, but the benefits are that we get a stand improvement exercise here. We, uh, we keep the loggers working and it lessens the demand on our mature timber. What we've done is we've marked in blue paint the trees that are being left. The remaining trees have been removed. These are the, the weak trees, the spindly diseased trees. The area was also fertilized. The uh, main method of application of the fertilizer is by helicopter. We're dealing with large areas. We have to spread the fertilizer as fast as possible. The area will probably be logged in the next 20 years, clear cut. By that time, the trees that are on this site should be a lot bigger. Pruning improves the crop too. Under special work programs, some of the lower limbs are removed to reduce knots and waste in milled lumber. The final harvesting of the trees is the culmination of all this work and the step that starts the silviculture cycle again. With the help of the Forest Resource Development Program, the branch is pressing ahead to regenerate all logged and burned forest land in BC to identify the finest parent trees to find the best way to produce high-quality seedlings through methods like biotechnology procedures. To plant those seedlings and tend them with the best possible techniques to improve our investment in British Columbia's prime resource, 